In today's video, I'd break a drill bit, cut my finger pretty bad on something not meant to cut, all to create some pretty wobbly steps. This is Jordan with Fox and the Sawdust. Stick around and we'll see how we make it out. So this is some 1x12 pine that I picked up at my local hardwood lumber supplier. And the reason that I got it there and not one of the big box stores is that the lumber that you get at the big box store is not actually a full 1 inch. If you look at the actual dimensions, it's 3 quarters of an inch by 12. So I've built steps with those before. I wound up needing a central support simply because they couldn't support my weight without bowing pretty bad and I'm not a heavy guy. So. I picked this stuff up for a little bit more money, but in the end you'll see it is much more stable, a lot easier to work with, and frankly, I think better looking, on top of the fact that it's a full one inch. So I know I said in the last video that I don't usually joint a board in a traditional way, but those really just long boards, when they're eight feet or longer than I'm going to use my track saw, even if they're about five feet or longer than I'm going to use my track saw. Otherwise I will use the jointer and the table saw uh, just simply for convenience and consistency. It is a lot faster on a lot shorter boards. This will give me a consistent length on all four of the boards that I need to uh, do for this. These are going to constitute the steps, uh, the actual platforms that you step on, nice and simple but I get some good clean cuts when I use the table saw. And I take this over to my jaw horse, my Rockwell jaw horse, uh, which is a, an incredibly useful tool. I use this thing at least a dozen times a week in the shop for sanding, placing boards, just whatever I need it for. Got good clamping force, but it'll hold that board down really well while I sand it. Otherwise, if I try to do it on a table, it'll jump all around. I don't have one of those fancy woodworking tables that has clamps on it, so this is the best I can do. So I learned something new on this project, I learned something new on just about every project, but these are called stringers, stair stringers. I don't know what I assumed they might be called, but that's what they're called. Got a couple of them here, they're made out of redwood. I don't know why they make them out of redwood. I would assume it has something to do with weather resistance, but I'm really not positive. If anyone does know, feel free to leave a comment. I'm always open to learning. But uh, I bought two of them there at Lowe's. That's going to constitute the actual steps of our steps process. Sanding down one edge of the boards because one of the edges is going to be exposed to the front where people could potentially slip and, you know, scrape their shin. But I'll take a second to talk about my sanding glove here. I just got this for cheap on Amazon, you guys, but it's been very, very useful. I use this thing just about every day, every time I have to sand off an edge or knock down something on a table to prevent it from being so sharp. They're extremely handy. If you don't have one already, pick one up. This process was a little bit frustrating. Trying to get the first board on these stringers was, yeah, frustrating is the right word. I don't know if uh, or if it, there's anyone out here watching this that has built these more frequently than I have and has a better idea of how to do this. In hindsight, I probably should have drilled into the board and put the screw in first before I set the board up to try and put the screw in, but it just kept falling down and in the end, just super frustrating. So as you'll see here in a little bit, I'm going to put these side railings on with some 4x4 redwood posts. And that's what's going to hold the railing on, but it's also going to be what holds the steps up and upright. So I'm putting a little temporary support in there, and so I'm taking my little level to make sure it is level, and my 4 foot level to make sure that I get the correct height. Then I went and cut a 2x4 at 28 and a half inches so that it sat at 29 and a half, the top of the step. And I'm just going to drill that in place as a temporary support while I put the rest of the steps on before I do the rails and the redwood posts. With the temporary support in the center, I can put the rest of the steps on. I could have done that with them on the ground really, but this just makes it nice and simple. One thing that I noticed as I was doing this was that although the boards were the same length and cut right to dimension, the stringers were not. They were actually a little bit twisted and a little bit warped. Not so much 
that they were beyond anything that I could do with them. It just required a little bit of creativity. So it took some time to drill the holes all on one side and screw them all in on one side. Then, as you'll see here in just a minute, as I was screwing in the second side, I had to go get a clamp and just make sure that it stayed in place while I was screwing it in on that side. And not to say that there's anything wrong with using a clamp on a project like this. Sometimes the boards just need a little gentle persuasion, you know. Wood moves and dances and kind of changes with the weather, so sometimes it just needs a little uh, help. I opted to go for the side posts with redwood instead of fir, which are your two options at the big box store. You'll notice I'm carrying it a little bit awkward. That's mostly because I've got a ceiling of eight and a half feet, but I left my trusses open when I built the shop, which means that I can store wood up to 12 and a half feet tall, but when I'm carrying it around the shop, it's a little bit awkward. But I decided to go with redwood instead of fir or pine primarily because I like the look. You can see there's uh, some different color in the redwood and it's just a little bit different. Once in a while you need to change things up and that to me is just a better look. Again, if anyone knows why a lot of the exterior building materials that you find for projects like this are redwood, I'd be all ears because the stringers were redwood, the posts were redwood, the rails were redwood which you'll see here in a little bit. So again, I'm assuming it has something to do with Redwood's versatility outdoors or its weather resistance, but I am all open to learning. Clamped the post right next to the stringer and made sure that it was level. You can see the level there on the floor. But right here, I'm just double checking where to drill. I ran into an issue here where the bit was not long enough to go through the post and the stringer at the same time so I wound up just needing to push as far as I could through the post with the bit and that got me through to where it actually scarred the stringer it went in about a quarter inch but not very far so in the end I wound up having to take the post off as you'll see drilled through the stringer after I drilled through the post but not before I messed up the post just a little bit and not irreparably, but I went from using the correct size bit to using one that was a lot thicker. The issue with that is that I didn't have any washers to go on the outside of the post. Now luckily the head on the carriage bolt was definitely large enough to hold the post to the stringer, but that could have been a very serious problem. I should have just stuck with the original size and I did that on the rest of the four posts. I just kind of mussed it up on this one. So I went back to the original size bit to drill through the stringer to make sure that everything was correct, used the washers on the other side, and in the end it worked out exactly the way that I was hoping. And I'm really praying that the bolt doesn't eventually get pulled through the post. So this has got to be one of my favorite features of this Stanley level. It's four feet long, but it's got one dial that rotates that will tell you the degrees uh, when you're leveling something on an angle. So set that up, rotated it, it measured out to exactly 29 degrees. So that's the degree that I'm going to stick my miter saw on so that I can make sure that all of my cuts are exactly the same when I do the rails. And it just occurred to me that I don't actually know what you call the upright posts that are underneath the handrail. Someone could uh, shoot a comment and let me know what those are called. Maybe I can Google it, but I'm lazy. Once I had the rail set up the way that I wanted to, I went and put the wood in the jaw horse to hold it in place while I drilled the holes for the screws to connect them to the upright posts. Now I've done this before where I've taken a drill bit, you start straight up and down until you get maybe an eighth of an inch in, then you tilt the bit, 
but that didn't work out well this time. Snapped clean into the wood. I thought for a minute about chipping the wood out around the bit and then trying to pull it out, but it hadn't gone out the other way, so I just wound up taking this screwdriver, tapping that bit in just a little bit farther into the wood, and what I did was I put wood filler over the top of it. So no one's going to see it, no one's ever going to touch it, it's just as safe as it would have been otherwise. There are a lot of really nice things about working for myself and by myself. Sometimes I miss the company, but in situations like this, I really wish I had a second pair of hands. I used an alligator clamp to try and hold it in place, and it did an okay job of it. Really, I just needed it to stop sliding down. If I was smart, now that I'm looking at it, I probably should have taken that clamp and clamped it the other way, just along the 4x4 post. That would have stopped it from moving down. There we go. Just learned a solution right in the middle of making this voiceover. Time will tell if I remember to do it on the next project. These 2x2 redwood rails you can actually buy in the correct length already, but they cost a little bit more, and if you've got a decent miter saw, then you don't need to worry about spending the extra money, where it only takes maybe an extra 30 seconds to cut each one to length and in the correct angle. Again, where we measured the angle already and it was 29 degrees, you stay consistent with that. As long as you've hung your handrail correctly, then it's going to be 29 degrees to make the uprights straight up and down to get screwed into the side of the what did I call them stringers <laughs> side of the stringers just drilling some pilot holes now for the lag screws that are going to hold those into the stringers which is nice and simple it doesn't have to be exact on these you probably could measure and really it might be a good idea to measure but I just eyeballed them as I was screwing them in and then found the correct socket to be able to screw in the lag screws. Took me a little longer than I anticipated, but yeah, no. There you go, Rain Man. So what I elected to do here was just screw in the lag screws so that the, there was a little bit sticking out. I held it up to the handrail and then just pressed it up against the redwood. Where redwood is a very soft wood, all that did was score it in just the right spot so I knew exactly where those holes were going to go. Went and grabbed my drill bit for the same size hole and did not drill all the way. Obviously it's a lag screw. I, I want it to screw and bite into the wood so I just drilled it maybe an eighth of an inch deep or so, just so that it would set right when I did that and screwed them all in. And that worked like a charm. Did that for all six of them all the way around and then just stuck a wood screw right on the top of the rails to secure it. There's some jobs that I really enjoy doing in woodworking. Sanding isn't one of them. But generally, the ones that I enjoy doing are the ones that I get to do multiple of in succession. So this was actually really enjoyable to me. This is the grip tape that I bought off of Amazon to be able to utilize for grip on the steps. And just rolling them all out at 32 inches exactly. For some reason, this type of work is really pleasant to me. I don't know what that means, but... You did it eight times, and then I took this little bit of super glue that I had to round off the corners of it, otherwise I thought it was going to look pretty cheap. So, rounding off the corners, and then just taking some scissors that I had around the shop, cutting out those round-offs, and I had eight perfectly symmetrical and consistent strips of grip tape. So this portion of it was really, really satisfying to me. Don't know why, not going to question it.
This was another portion where measuring probably could have helped me, but in the end, I really just eyeballed the strips of tape to make sure that they all sat about where I wanted them to. And you want to make sure that when you're doing this, you're not peeling off the entire backing and trying to set it straight. You want to peel it off just a little bit at a time. So you see I got a little portion of it there, made sure the grip tip was straight, then slowly peeled it off one bit at a time, sticking it down to make sure that it was right where it needed to be. Now there's plenty of ways you can cut yourself, especially in woodworking. I've got about 15 different items that I could literally slice a limb off in my shop every single day. And you can get paper cuts, you can get all kind of cuts. But I'm pretty sure I'm the first YouTube woodworker that can claim a copper cut. These are the little post caps that I bought at Lowe's to be able to put on the end just for looks. They were like three bucks a piece or something, so they just look very nice. It helps make the project nice and clean, but as you could have seen when I opened the package, I cut my finger a little bit. What I thought was a little bit wound up bleeding profusely. So I stopped, took a minute, cleaned the wound out, and put some super glue over the top of it to close it up, and went straight back to work. Just a little uh, construction adhesive, and set it right on top, and push it down to give it a nice firm adhesion. Nothing out of hold through anything. And I'm done, he foolishly thought, until that happened. It's the disadvantage of working with soft woods, and I didn't think to put any cross supports on this when I was building it, so that's what I'm doing now. Just took a piece of 4x4 that I had lying around. This is actually just some dimensional fur that was sitting around in the shop. Cut it to spec, and then just sort of hammered it in. Then took some two and a half inch screws, just some wood screws, to secure it in place. I might have overdone it with the screws. You can't really see it on this side, but I'm pretty sure I put five on each side, which may or may not be too much, but the 300 pound hula dancer that gets on these steps is gonna really appreciate the extra effort. And there you go, finished project delivered to the customer, which in this case was an RV dealer. And there you go, folks. If you like what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you around next time.